How you doing, everybody? Today we're going to take a quick look at Weird, the Al Yankovic story. This was co-written by the man himself, also co-written and directed by Eric Apple, and stars Daniel Radcliffe as everyone's favorite music parody artist. This is a biopic that covers the life and times of Weird Al Yankovic and is totally true and not exaggerated in any way, probably. It covers his unhappy childhood, his discovery by a famous music producer, his rise to fame, subsequent downfall, and rise again. Basically, it's like every biopic you've ever seen, except weirder. This movie had kind of similar beginnings to Machete in that it all began with a trailer for a fake movie, and then someone said, why don't we just actually make the movie? And here we are. And if you haven't figured this out already, it's not a true biopic, it's a spoof, which becomes very clear as soon as you hear Diedrich Bader's voice as the grizzled narrator. Basically, he's doing his Batman voice. And honestly, a spoof was probably the way to go, because no disrespect to Mr. Yankovic, but the real life and times of Weird Al probably would not have had as much dramatic potential. Al basically said as much many years ago when he was on VH1's Behind the Music. I've never slept with a band member, I've never done drugs, I don't smoke, I rarely drink, I never married my 13-year-old cousin, so what do you people want from me? So instead of a true biopic, we're basically satirizing the biopic genre, and they do that quite well. This was very funny, I laughed my ass off. And it's not surprising that Al can make a funny movie, he did that once before with UHF, but unlike UHF, this time he actually has a budget. I like UHF, but man, that movie was held together with string and duct tape. This looks so much better. And the story they came up with works really well as a biopic spoof. It starts with his unhappy childhood, with his parents who do not approve of his songwriting lifestyle. We see him get discovered by a big shot music producer, which in this case is Dr. Demento. Over time, the fame and fortune goes to his head, and he turns to drugs and alcohol, and gets into a relationship with a very bad influence, which in this case is Madonna. And he ruins his relationships with pretty much everyone else, including his bandmates, but eventually reconciles, makes up with his parents, and all that. And that's about as much as I'm willing to say, because I do not want to give away the ending. It was unexpected, I'll tell you that. And everything about this is completely ridiculous. There's a line early on where Al is talking about how he wants to make music and his parents are like, we think it's best for you if you stop being who you are and give up on your dreams. Like that's actually what they say verbatim, it's amazing. And imagining Dr. Demento as this big shot record producer was a stroke of genius. And according to this movie, Eat It was an original song and not a parody of Michael Jackson's Beat It. Who knew? And I do like how they snuck little bits and pieces of actual truth into the story. Tom Lennon has a small part as a door-to-door -door accordion salesman, which is actually how Al got into playing the accordion. And of course, his music career did actually begin with the Dr. Demento show, and there's even a scene of him recording some of his early songs in a bathroom, which actually did happen. Like many people, I was a little confused when they cast Daniel Radcliffe, of all people, to play Weird Al. Like, that seemed like a very odd choice, but that was before I realized what exactly they were trying to do. Once that became clear, the casting made a lot more sense, and Radcliffe is actually very good in this. He absolutely understood the assignment, and I don't think anyone could have played this part better. And no, he does not do any actual singing in this movie. His voice is dubbed over with Al's voice, not unlike Rami Malek in Bohemian Rhapsody. We have Evan Rachel Wood as Madonna, who Al apparently had a fling with back in the day, at least according to this movie. And she was dead on. Just the voice and the mannerisms and everything just nailed it. Al himself has a small part in the movie as a record executive, and surprise, very funny. And there's a whole mess of cameos, especially during the pool party scene at Dr. Demento's house, which seems to be based on a similar scene in Boogie Nights. You got a whole mess of people playing famous musicians. Uh, Jack Black is there as Wolfman Jack. Conan O'Brien as Andy Warhol. Emo Phillips as Salvador Dali, which, <laughs> that was an interesting choice. If you really want me to nitpick, there were maybe a couple of places where the pacing wasn't very good, but really minor complaints. Overall, I loved it. It was everything I hoped it would be, and especially if you're a fan of Al's music, it is definitely worth seeing. And you don't have to pay to see it because it's on Roku. You will be subjected to ads, but I promise you it is worth it. And if you're outside the United States and can't access the Roku app, there are <clears throat> alternate methods. And that's all I have to say about Weird, the Al Yankovic story. Till next time, take care.